Oh yes, that went like perfectly. So you see at the moment it's overflowing my hardscape area. Many of you know I set up the Pleco tank right behind me. Oh, hello. <laughs> Little shrimp casing. Well, I wasn't gonna put a uh, tank on it, but it would be rude not to, wouldn't it? <laughs> What's going on, guys? Well, welcome back to the vlog. So today I'm gonna be giving you an update on all of the new tanks that we've had going recently. There's been quite a few changes in both the studios. And also I'm gonna be telling you about a big, big new project coming up. Several big new projects coming up, actually. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Right, first things first, some of you may notice that the Exoterra that was there has come out. I mean, I, I don't really like it so much. I was going to be doing like lizards and things like that, but I just realised I'm not that into them. I like fish tanks. So what I've done is remove that and this whole system is going to be moved as well in a minute. And then that leaves a whole section there for a four foot tank. What are we putting in that four foot tank? Well, fish, obviously, but I want to be doing a brand new ecosystem aquarium. You guys have probably seen before. I've done a few ecosystem aquariums now and one of them is at like half a million views so obviously I guess people like it it's not like a no filter setup an ecosystem aquarium is just basically a tank I like to set up that is basically zero maintenance you keep everything in the tank like so small filter just to push stuff around more for mechanical filtration than anything and uh, the plants do all the work you know the fish and they are just so much fun to create and they're what I like doing the most but first of all got to take all of this out and put it somewhere <laughs> Oh yes, that went like perfectly. The only damaged court, well it's not damaged, but you know, is the Aquasaur pushing forward a little bit in the uh, hybrid Dutch style aquarium tank. But <laughs> look at that, it looks great. So some people said that they saw uh, my plants purling a lot and thought that I used CO2. No, after a big water change, you do get a lot of purling like that. I guess my water's just absolutely full of oxygen because this happens every single time. And in the bottom tank as well, we've got the same situation. We've got Bubbleville. Um, yeah, that all, all went smoothly as well in the pirate ship tank. I'm probably going to change this one soon because it's kind of had its day now. <laughs> I mean, I should probably trim it back though as well. See, I really like this stand better. This is just one I made, just knocked it up quickly. I'm no carpenter, but I think it looks quite good with the natural wood colours and, and all that instead of the metal one that was there. If you're wondering where the metal one is. Okay, so I've put it out here. Now this is outside the studio in my plant storage area. So I'm also going to be putting some hardscape stuff on here as well. Maybe a tank as well. I'm not even sure yet. Probably not though, because I've got, I got four storage tanks here already. So yeah, I've got loads of hardscape that I can put onto here in my other studio. So you see at the moment it's overflowing my hardscape area and it's just all poured out into here. So I can take all this stuff, put it on the shelves and just make it look a bit better. Right, so that's that all sorted. I don't really know what I'm going to do with this thing yet. Um, I might just take it back to uh, my old studio, if you guys remember, that you've been on the channel a long time, set it up in there, use it for storage or something. I don't know, maybe there'll be some room in the other studio in a minute. I'm not sure yet. Well, I wasn't going to put a uh, tank on it, but it would be rude not to, wouldn't it? <laughs> so this window behind has got tint on it, so there's not loads of like sunlight coming through. And I'll probably just black out the background anyway, so that stops any light hitting it, other than the, the main light, of course. But I'm not even sure yet. I've just put it there. It might not even stay there. I don't know. It fits nicely, though, doesn't it? It doesn't, doesn't sort of look out of place, I don't think. Let me step back. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, it's quite hard to sort of see anything at the moment, but it could work, it could work. So what I'm gonna do is build a stand that goes all the way across this whole area. I mean, the tank's only like, like that big. So that means I can put stuff either side as well, which will look cool. I can put stuff underneath it. Yeah, the whole sort of section will be its own thing. <laughs> it should look really good though. So 
So recently, many of you know I set up the Pleco tank right behind me. This is because he was eating all the plants in my Amazon aquarium. Now, I think it's safe to say the plants have stopped being eaten. He's doing really well, or she is doing really well. Some said he, some said she in the last comment, so I'm not actually sure on the set. But doing really well in this setup. Seems to stay in the exact same place all the time, which is brilliant because I actually get to see the fish. I've also been feeding the fish like many of you suggested. Some blood worms have gone in, but also the algae wafers, uh, cucumber courgettes as well which is uh, what do you guys call zucchini yeah <laughs> but yeah all so far so good slight issue on the surface though right yeah here's what's going on, on the surface there's like an oily slick going over the top now this is actually really common on new setups uh, so obviously there's no surface agitation because the internal filter is down low maybe i could lift it up a bit actually probably give it a bit better surface agitation this will eventually go it's just because we've got an, a big piece of organic wood in there that hasn't been in water yet which means it's just sort of like leaching stuff into the water column i've done quite a few water changes already on this tank it's been set up for like a week now not quite a week actually nearly a week but yeah it's just a case of keep scooping it off or using a surface skimmer which is what i like to do just to clean it up like every couple of days or so right yeah there you go you can see look just cleaning the surface off really quickly i mean you don't have to do it this way you can just put like a pot in there and just sort of scoop it out i just find this is nice and quick and because i've obviously got so many tanks dotted around all i've got to do is just drag that extension lead with me and just keep plonking this in each tank and then you know yeah that just cleans them all up oh this is the newest tank by the way guys i don't mind showing you a little quick sort of snippet of it it's not as bright as that the camera went weird and no, that's more like it yeah so this is a black water tank it's nowhere near finished yet so i don't mind you just seeing a little bit of it this is going to be the next build video by the way so it's, it's really cool i've got really cool fish to go in as well they're actually waiting patiently in here can we see them at all no we can't <laughs> but yeah really looking forward to getting this tank done look at how cool it looks so far i did put some pictures of just a hardscape on my instagram for those of you that you know follow me on there but yeah looking really forward to getting it finished i'm just waiting for the water to clear up i'm going to add more tannings i'm going to sort out some floating plants maybe some moss as well not too much you know how fast moss grows <laughs> So I'm afraid we've got some bad news guys. So many of you know that I've been treating pumpkin, my uh, fancy goldfish, ranchu goldfish for about two months now for a swim bladder issue. Well, things recently got really good after she's eating all the sort of peas, you know, when you can, you can cook the peas, take off the skin and feed it to them. And it's supposed to really help. And it did sort of help. She was 90 degrees upside down well facing the bottom obviously of the tank and it put her to 45 degrees and I thought things were going to get better but very very quickly things took a turn for the worse uh, she stopped swimming was just floating around the tank in the flow and her eyes sort of went all sort of dusted and it was at that point I was like right we need to we need to do something here this is cruel so you know I, I made the decision to euthanize uh, I think it was the, the, the right thing to do because um, you know it, you don't want anything suffering but you know it's strange though because you get attached to fish. I've had that fish now for nearly two years and even though you see it every day, you forget that you see it every day and now that it's not there, it's like, oh yeah, that one's, that, that fish is gone. It's like, oh, gutted really. But you know, she had a really good life. She had some good tanks and it's been a pleasure to have her. But life does go on for Ember, her tank mate. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do yet. I might just do like a 60 centimeter tank and just keep that fish on its own. I'm not sure I want any more fancy goldfish if I'm honest because that's three in a row that exactly the same problem happened to over the course of the two years. Apparently it's very, very common with fancy goldfish. Something to do with the breeding types and it, it twists in insides and I don't really wanna get into all of that I don't know enough about it but all I do know is that three of the same fish of mine passed away the same way it's not great is it but saying that Ember is looking fantastic and doing really really well and I definitely want to do a nice setup for just Ember on his own so in the last video you guys saw me adding these long thin albino cherry barbs 
they look great but we definitely need more fish i think they're being a little bit sort of still and shy because there's not a lot going on in the tank and what i want it eventually to be like is this tank here so this is my um oh my goodness what did i put a white t-shirt on for sorry guys so yeah this is the amazon aquarium many of you know it already but there's loads of stuff going on there's always fish in certain areas there's loads to look at lots going on down at the bottom areas as well is that cory in there yeah there's a Adolfi Corey underneath there look yes there's always something to look at and that's what I want to get over in this tank so at the moment we've just pretty much got the cherry barbs in there and the cleanup crew as well so yeah down here look a nice little albino pleco well albino bristle nose call them plecos as well people do don't they they're labeled as plecos in the shop apparently they're not plecos but they are plecos I don't know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's nice and sort of calm at the moment, isn't it? I suppose it makes sense for this tank to be calm because at the end of the day it is the Buddha, which is all about, you know, tranquility and that kind of thing. Look at the growth though. So, so nice, isn't it? I did hack it back in the last video. Oh, hello. <laughs> Little shrimp casing. Sometimes these can be worrying because you think you've got dead shrimp everywhere and then you're like, no, 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 it's just its, uh, just its exoskeleton. But yeah, I listened to all your comments. We definitely need more barbs. Um, we want to keep the peaceful kind. So obviously I'll talk to Matt at Maidenhead Aquatics about what would be best to go with these fish. Um, I just want a good mix, you know, lots of different things going on. I think it'd be really cool in this tank just to have lots more sort of action. Because it's a nice big aquarium. There's plenty of room for a lot more fish. Like if I come from the side here, look, We've got so much space. It's so healthy as well, isn't it? Oh, hello. There's another albino bristle nose. Good work, good work. I've also got a lot of Amano shrimp in here as well, but I don't know where they are at the moment. Where are they? Oh, there's one, look, just doing his job. Thank you very much, sir. There's loads of them. Oh, and just behind it, look, we've got an Otto catfish as well. They've all been doing their cleaning. Great job. This, this tank is almost spotless. There's a tiny little bit of hair algae that's still in some of the mosses, but that is it. So overall, absolutely perfect. Can't wait to get more fish for this tank now. It has been nearly a month since we put our little shelled buddy in his new tank here. And in that time, a lot's actually changed. I was about to say nothing's changed, but yeah, it has. A lot has changed. If I'm not like big, big things, but for instance, this whole all these leaves here look they're all brand new which means the system i set up underneath for sort of growth with the soil that i made aquasol i i crushed it up and made it into like a paste and pretty much painted it on the rocks and then you know the water drips on it it takes all the nutrients to the plants there's full build videos for this by the way guys if you want to go and take a look uh, it's, the heat lamp's not on we're still early in the morning because i like to film early in the morning <laughs> so yeah that's that but also remember this tank was so well established well the filter sorry beforehand was so well established it's been running for like six months something like that the whole time i've been in the studio anyway and because it's so established i didn't need to do any water changes as soon as i you know put it in so since set up this tank has had zero water changes i think i should do one now but i think it's going to completely change the look of the whole tank we're probably going to use that lose those tannins like straight away but that's not a problem i can add some more sort of leaves or botanicals if i want to let's just take a look quickly let's see what it looks like without any tannins I keep saying tannings and people have told me off for that. It's tannins, no G, tannins. <laughs> well, there we go, look. It literally has completely changed the look of the tank. I don't know, do you prefer it? I'm not sure if I do. I mean, it's still a little bit of tinge to it, which is nice, uh, but it's nowhere near as brown. Do you reckon this setup will look better with no tannins in? like, you know, completely clear water, or should we keep the tannins? I mean, the wood will still leach tannins into this new water, so it's not like it's gonna stay completely clear, but, you know, I f do we want it really brown, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know, I think it's quite a good level. I'm not sure, actually. I'll just give it time and see what I see what I think over the next few days as it releases more. So quite a few of you are worried that when I added the fish in that Timmy was gonna eat them. Uh, some people say turtles will always eat fish, and you're probably 100% right. They will, if they get the opportunity and they're quick enough, they will 100% snap these fish out of the water. But Timmy's only little, he's only young, and he doesn't seem to be anything fast like fast enough, because look, he's waiting there right now. That's his stance ready to snatch. No. <laughs> I wait patiently for opportunity, and then I start, oh no, it's gone. <laughs> 